A major new development today in the Trayvon Martin shooting case. The special prosecutor says uh, she's decided not, repeat, not to use a grand jury to investigate the Florida teenager's death. So what does that mean for the possible arrest of the shooter, George Zimmerman? Let's go to Sanford, Florida right now. David Mattingly is standing by with the very latest. Uh, David, explain what happened and what's likely to happen. Wolf, we've known all along that Angela Corey, the special prosecutor in this case, had three options. She could file charges, arrest, and prosecute George Zimmerman. She could drop the case entirely, or she could go to a grand jury and see what the grand jury would decide about how to handle this case. Well, now she says that she's not going to go to a grand jury. She indicated uh, early on that she might go with this route. She says she's not going to go to a grand jury and will be her decision and her decision alone about whether or not George Zimmerman gets prosecuted in this case. So right now, she's clearly putting herself in the hot seat and getting praised from both sides because of it. Uh, we got a comment from the attorney representing George Zimmerman uh, this from Hal Vorick. He said that he's not surprised. He doesn't know what the decision from that department will eventually be, but he called that decision for her to take this out of the hands of a grand jury. He called it courageous. We also heard from Benjamin Crump, who's representing the family of Trayvon Martin. He says he is hopeful this is one step closer to what the family has been wanting all along. We were anticipating that there would be no grand jury because the family has always been hopeful that there would just simply be an arrest. We believe from day one that they had enough evidence to arrest the killer of Trayvon Martin. And now, as the evidence has continued to uh, unfold, we think there has been a plethora of evidence to simply affect probable cause to do an arrest. Not for a conviction, but for an arrest. Earlier today, there was a group of students who had hiked 40 miles into Sanford. They emerged here at the, uh, the Sanford Police Department behind me. A small group of them did block the doors to the Sanford Police Department in protest. Uh, the department was prepared for this. They had actually shut down operations here today and were directing people to go to City Hall if they needed any business with the police. But the, the demonstrations went on. Angela Corey actually speaking to some of the students today via, via telephone. Uh, commending them for their actions, thanking them for their perseverance and, and being here today. But she would not tell them one way or the other about how this case might go in the future. In fact, when she put out the release today saying that she was not going to go to a grand jury, Corey said, be, be share, sure not to read anything into this. She's not giving any indication whatsoever about what the future might hold, Wolf, for George Zimmerman. Is she giving any indication at all when she will make her decision? A timetable is also out the window right here. If she was going to a grand jury, there, that might indicate when she was going to make the next step. But by taking it out of the hands of the grand jury, she is now back completely in control, again, clearly and very comfortably, it seems, in the hot seat on making this decision when she's ready to make it. David Mattingly on the scene for us. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, dig a little bit deeper right now uh, about this new twist in the Trayvon Martin case uh, with legal analysts and former federal prosecutor Sonny Hostin. Sonny, uh, what's your reaction? What's your take? Uh, you've been spending a lot of time looking into this story. You know, I'm not surprised by uh, the, the news today that she would not be using a grand jury and uh, using the April 10th date because we know that April 10th date, the grand jury date, was set by her predecessor, by the former state attorney who is no longer part of this case. So that in and of itself sort of told me that she probably wouldn't be using that former state attorney's timeline. The other thing, Wolf, is that many seasoned prosecutors will tell you that they are comfortable making those tough judgment calls, those hard charging decisions, and letting the burden rest on their own shoulders. They look at the evidence in a case, they look at the thoroughness of an investigation, they speak to witnesses, they speak to their investigators, and they make those charging decisions. As a former prosecutor, I will tell you, oftentimes I made my own charging decisions. So that doesn't surprise me. I think what's also interesting is that in Florida, a grand jury consists of not less than 15 and not more than 21 grand jurors. And you need a consensus of at least 12 grand jurors 
to indict. So strategically, this was also very smart by Angela Corey because when you're talking about the stand your ground law and a justifiable homicide defense, those are very difficult legal issues for lay people to grapple with and it would be possible not to get uh, an indictment in a case like this. So strategically, it's um, smart to allow the lawyer to make the determination as to whether or not there's probable cause to arrest. Yeah, it's a, a tough decision for a prosecutor because a prosecutor never wants to file charges and lose the case. And I've spoken to a lot of criminal defense attorneys who say, you know what, they think that they could, uh, they could acquit him if in fact there are charges. This is by no means a slam dunk. What do you think? I think that's right. I mean, this is a tough case, especially in the face of stand your ground because um, you know, when you're talking about a justifiable homicide, you're talking about evidence. You're talking about things that are fact specific. And so I think it's certainly possible that a jury would determine that self defense or, or Zimmerman standing his ground would be appropriate. In that sense, Wolf, I think it's also important that if charges are brought, that this case not be overcharged. You know, you're hearing people discussing first degree murder and second degree murder. That, those are very difficult cases to, to prove. Manslaughter in a case like this, the facts that I know of, that would be the most appropriate charge in this case. Good point, Sonny, as usual. Thanks very much. We'll check back with you tomorrow. Uh, meanwhile, Thanks, the NBA boy. legend Magic Johnson is also giving his take on the Trayvon Martin case. He spoke just a little while ago with CNN's Zoraida Sambal. And listen to this. It's very unfortunate because also a lot of us have sons. Sons who wear hoodies, they, you know, caps turned backwards, and they're not doing anything. It just, that, that's the fashion of today. And so it could really happen to our sons. That's what the NBA players, I'm sure, are thinking. That's what I'm thinking.